Hi, I'm Duncan McRae, Chief Editor at TechForge, and today I'm joined by Joe Linton, Managing Director at Cryptomatic. So, welcome, thanks for joining us. Thank you, and i um, very excited to be here. Maybe we could just start by you telling us a little bit about the company and what it does. Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to. So, our company is Cryptomatic. We've been uh, protecting the world's uh, digital valuable assets for the past 30 plus years, working with some of the largest brands in payments, financial services, as well as semiconductor mm -hmm. businesses. So we focus, as the name suggests, we're at the intersection of cryptography and mathematics, mm -hmm. uh, and we focus on applied cryptographic innovations in those fields. Okay. So what kind of trends have you noticed in cybersecurity lately? That's a very good question. So, and obviously on this show in particular, right, you have the different sections of cybersecurity, you have the IoT aspect of it, you have the cloud aspect of it. So I think a lot of it is, you know, in maturing industries is what we see. Um, you know, if you take payments, for example, it's a very mature industry. Uh, there's a lot of compliance regulations are in place, a lot of mature organizations. Obviously with payments, you protect the revenue stream very directly. And then on the other hand, you have those uh, IoT manufacturers that are, you know, maybe in, uh, in a phase of, uh, you know, MVPs, just getting towards the rollout. And they have some very specific challenges in that their devices are going to be in the field for a very long time. So you're protecting against a known threat, which is the, the threat today. But then you're also looking ahead, you know, 10, 15 years from now, what is that threat model going to look like? What are the different new threat vectors that are that are entering? So, so that's sort of a shift that we're seeing that we're more discussing. You know those topics, and then of course, you know, talking about cloud, multi-cloud is a reality. Right? Mm -hmm. Most of the the large organizations already have their workloads running in the cloud, and typically, what we see is you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So you don't want to be boxed into with any single cloud service provider. So you want to end up with something that is, you know, multi-cloud that you can move your your workloads from from one to the other. So those are probably the the three things that I would mention. Yeah, and you gave a talk at the event. I'm afraid I missed it, but you did talk about cryptographic agility and post quantum computing. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about those and how important they are? Absolutely. Yeah. So cryptographic agility is you know is a concept that has been around for a long time in the industry so if you think about you know encryption is everywhere right so encryption is the means to protect your data for privacy reasons for you know security authenticity so um you know it, be it becomes a real question about you know now i have all these keys distributed across my my environments again multiple clouds on prem you got the edge you got you know keys are everywhere so you have to manage them so every key has a life cycle right you generate it, you use it, you eventually just continue using it. You have to, you know, generate new keys. And um, then on top of it, you have the different uh, algorithms that are being used, right? So, so you want to go, you know, today RSA is very widely used, for instance. And uh, so, you know, the little green lock that you see in your uh, browser when you go to a website, yeah. right? So you know you're on the website that you want to talk to. That is using RSA cryptographic operation to uh, authenticate that website to Okay. And if companies are trying to achieve this cryptographic agility, what kind of challenges would they face with that? And how can they be overcome? So there's a, the challenge really lies in um, changing your uh, algorithms without disrupting your business, right? So you want to avoid having to constantly recompile your applications. You want to have a, a centralized repository of those keys so that in the case that you would need to uh, replace any, any type of algorithm, say, if, you know, change the key length or go from one algorithm to the next, that you don't disrupt the business side of it. Of course, the big looming thing on the horizon is the advent of the quantum computer. Right? Um, with, with the compute power that it, that it is, that it's bringing, it's really a big threat to the current cryptographic algorithms that we are using. And, um, you know, to prepare for that, going back to what I said earlier, you know, looking at, uh, for instance, uh, IoT device manufacturers, uh, we have a lot of customers in the automotive space that, you know, they roll out the devices, they know they're going to be in the field for 10, 15 years. So with the advent of the quantum computer, eventually there's going to be that point in the future where I need to um, add new protection mechanism to those yeah. devices. And so cryptographic agility really gives you a tool to do that in the future, to be able to make that switch if and when it needs to happen. Yeah, I was going to ask you about how companies can prepare for this post-quantum 
computing. Um, how can they prepare? Any advice that you can share with people? So typically the advice that we give is, you know you have a little bit of time. Right? So quantum computers are maybe six, seven, eight, ten years away. So what we're, what we're advising is, you know, use that time to prepare. It's not, you're not in firefighting mode yet, right? You didn't wake up yet in the morning and RSA is cracked and, you know, all hell breaks loose. So, you know, take, take the, the backwards approach and say, okay, let's, let's assume, you know, 2030 uh, and then plan backwards. So what we say is, in you know, the first step, do a cryptographic inventory. So go through all your applications, Look at what cryptographic operations are they using? What algorithms are they using? Look at you know uh, um, your your uh, cryptographic libraries that are used, and find all your certificates and keys, and then create an inventory of that. And once you have that inventory, run re your risk management processes over it to really come to a point where you can prioritize, and then eventually build a roadmap. So you you know you address the priority first, uh, and then and then you you move the way down. And then eventually uh, you come to a point where you could run a proof of concept, right? And that's the point where we say, well, maybe involve your vendor ecosystem, right? Talk to partners who won't be able to solve that all alone and then run a proof of concept and then eventually start rolling out uh, cryptographic uh, agile systems. Okay. And with Cryptomatic, uh, what are the plans for the future? Is there anything that you can tell us about what you've got coming up in the next year? Absolutely, yeah. So um, we have, uh, you know, four different product legs. One is key management, which is mostly what we've been discussing. One is in payments. One is in digital identity and uh, signing. One is in mobile app security. So, um, you know, in, in payments, uh, we see a lot of moving uh, into the cloud, which, you know, traditionally uh, hasn't happened yet. So that's probably the biggest change that we're going to see in, in the payment space. And then for digital identity and signing, it's highly driven by uh, legislation, European legislation. EIDAS is, is, the, is the term that is being used there. Uh, so that's certainly an area where we see you know, more and more services being required to really uh, um, educate and uh, enhance the digitalization of, you know, for instance, customer onboarding and a bank to have that as a completely digital uh, workflow. So, so really that's cloudification, digitization are, are really the, the things that we see as, as the trends in, in our industry. All right. Well, good luck with everything. And thanks very much for talking to us. Absolutely. Today. It's been my pleasure. And uh, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Sure.